Okay, go. Okay. Welcome everybody. It's the second meeting of June. Miami Township Board of Trustees. Uh, it is uh, five o'clock. We'll begin. Two trustees, uh, fiscal officer, uh, road superintendent, Ooh, big bosses here. Uh, chief, and um, then we have the fourth estate. <laughs> Welcome all. I would uh, entertain a motion to adapt the minutes of June 3rd, 2019. I will make that motion. Uh, second it. Is there any further discussion regarding the adoption of those minutes? There were a few name additions, but they're all pretty much straightened out now. Mm -hmm. uh, hearing no further, may we vote please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. I, now, I would now entertain a motion to adopt to approve the payment of the bills in the amount of $46,540.36, broken down general fund $1,073.68. Fire fund $21,610.20. Cemetery fund $4,410.32. Uh, EMS billing $10,447.97. Road and bridge uh, $4,788.80. And capital project uh, new firehouse $3,809.39. Is there a motion? I will make that motion. Second. Uh, Okay, Mr. Hobbs, <laughs> any further discussion regarding paying those accounts? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Correspondence for the period. Um, 2019 County Director of Officers, Directors, and County Association Officers, uh, Cemetery and Cremation Magazine, Tarma Quarterly Newsletter, Federal Grants Forum, Green County Council on Aging Newsletter, uh, Ohio Township Associated Month Monthly Newsletter, and Legislative Alert, Alert, Green County Public Health Meeting Announcement for June 6th, uh, Elon City Radar Speed Sign Information, I don't think we did that. July 4th Fireworks Contribution Request, we'll put that under uh, new business, I guess, email regarding the 2020 Health District Subdivision Fees, um, they appear to be very similar to the 2019s. Start Ohio Monthly Summary Report. Lost my fiscal um, Email about uh, the YS, uh, C, YSD, left out the D, YSD, C, D, C timetable and code of regulations. Uh, we'll talk about that later on. Uh, urban flooding and resilience. Seminar information MBRPC's June Equity Initiative newsletter. My Township Fire and Rescue 2018 annual report. Fund status, revenue status, preparation status for June 17, 2008. What, what, what was that gesture you just made? I just wanted to make sure that <laughs> you knew the report was here. Is there any further correspondence? Um, I got one, but I can't remember what it was. I just, just it I'll do it next time. Here we go. Let's go to the new fire. Or let's go to the fire. Not the new fire. Let's, let's go to the fire. Just <laughs> the regular fire. Yeah. All righty. <clears throat> Since the last meeting of the Board of Trustees, we've had 43 EMS incidents, 16 fire incidents, including a small house fire on Northwood Drive on Saturday. And we're headed mostly extinguished by the time the guys got there. It was an electrical fire that spread up into their attic. Uh, we did 42 fire safety inspections. Really? Street fair was in there. Oh. <laughs> Mayhem of Street Fair. I think we had four outside of that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, I've got a resolution which I don't know the number, so it's just resolution 2019 blank. Mm -hmm. To re re reclassify vol current volunteer firefighter EMT Justin Boutique to uh, part time basis. He will work the current one. Okay? Go to the 24 hour shift once a week alongside Joe that was vacated when Ryan Evans went to the city's front um, Justin's been with us for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. He's a big kid. No good heads and shoulders. Do we have a resolution number? Current? 21. I'm sorry, 21? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's still in the blank number <laughs> <laughs>
and it's just a standard, a standard reclassification resolution. So, I uh, entertain a motion for adoption of resolution 2019-21, reclassification of PR, MTFR employee, whereas continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department, and whereas current volunteer firefighter EMT Justin Poti has acquired and demonstrated all the necessary qualifications to serve in that capacity of firefighter EMT for the fire rescue department in a part-time basis, and whereas Chief Allman has recommended the reclassification of this employee, and whereas funds are available for this purpose within the fire department's 2019 operating budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Justin Poti shall be reclassified from volunteer to part-time status within the fire rescue department effective June 18, 2019. Is there a motion? I so move. There is a motion and a second. There's a second. Um, any further discussion? He intends to still be a volunteer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Check. May we vote, please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Uh, we also just last week received three volunteer applications out of the blue, which was really nice. Actually, all in two days. Excellent. Um, Perhaps from the street fair? Or? Uh, no, I think they just all decided to bring it. One guy's in from Bell. There is actually one person from the Los Angeles Township Metroplex. Yeah, yeah. And she's certified as an EMT. So. Really? However, she has a conviction as the hex in the past, but we're going to overlook that. No, kidding, kidding. Um, so we'll process those and see what happens. So, I mean, you really have no clue why three suddenly in one week. Uh, cool. Whereas your report talks about seven volunteers last year. Mm -hmm. And that was largely a result as a result of a major drop. That was completely a result of a major drop because they also so the same thing. I either got the cards something in the mail. Something is in the air that... Yeah, hopefully. Uh, we also had an ambulance involved crash uh, during street fair. Uh, Medic 82 was responding to a, uh, a reported car crash in Bat Township on Dayton Springs. They were turning off of Xenia Avenue with their license sirens on to Cemetery Street, and a gentleman had stopped and then backed up a little bit to let them pass, and then kept backing. And he backed into the rear, the other side of the ambulance, causing a big paint scratch and damaging the rear fender ring. The police were called. We luckily had another crew, so they were able to go to the original crash, and they took a report, uh, notified all versions of our insurance company. <laughs> Um, and we'll talk to Dan, we're okay, repair clothes, but um, and uh, we'll go from the end, it's still in service, so they primarily just cosmetic damage. We're not coming out, we're all cosmetic damage. Mm -hmm. so. um, <coughs> street fair was nuts as, as usual. Mm -hmm. We only had six calls during it, but um, it was a ginormous crowd. I think we gave out 500 balloons or something. What were the calls for? Mainly car crashes in that <laughs> Actually, on Dayton Hill Springs, primarily due to the heavier, tra heavier traffic. Mm -hmm. All minor. Mm -hmm. And then there was one in downtown, um, downtown Byron, there in <laughs> that township. There has been an old cable TV cable just hanging off the side of the road in front of someone's house. And I don't know if it's the same helpful citizen, but someone keeps driving past it. Seeing it and calling them on one, it's like some massive thing. So, mm. um, when the last time Brett like stapled it to the telephone pole, uh, hopefully it won't. We have to call again, so hopefully we'll see. Put a little note on there. Not this is not a problem. <laughs> it's probably the same person who drives by some car off the road in the winter and then calls nine one one as a crash, and when the dispatcher says, "Can you see if anyone's hurt?" They say, "Oh no, no, I didn't stop." <laughs> I really cared so much. Um, <laughs> and last but not least, I've got the 2018 annual report to review with y'all. Okay. If you like. Re review away. Right. Turn on the projector. Okay. Because it looks so much better that way. Except I'm in a blind. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing personal. So, in theory, this will work. Did you um, the lights? Only if you made popcorn. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, let me turn off the correct light. But I don't remember which switch it is. I think it's that switch. <coughs> ah. See, in the new building, this will all be done with a clapper. 
You just clap and uh, it's brightening up the more Chris. I was gonna You're say like, my god my eyes <laughs> <laughs> Follow along. Yes, you have your own handy dandy version. Mm -hmm. There it is, really bad. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's neat. So, <laughs> so that's 2018, and please excuse me if I didn't edit it correctly and it pops up in another year in there. But. Ah! Yeah, and again, this isn't just for you, this is also for the public, so that's why some of it may seem self explanatory. So. All right, that's our core values. Thing. But obviously, they're the same as we've had for the last ten years. Do we want to aim the? We're thinking, Mark. <laughs> He's gonna chase Megan around the room. <laughs> Cinematography provided by Mark. So service, safety, dedication, professionalism, and diversity. The same as the so we do all these things, firefighting, advanced life support, emergency medical services, fire prevention, environmental protection, special rescue, and emergency management. And of course, as you know, we serve all these places, Miami Township, Eastern Bath, Village of Yale Springs, the Village of Clifton. Uh, it's approximately 7,500 people. Um, try to get the uh, population of that is really creative. So that's an estimate. <laughs> But we think it's pretty decent. All right. So as of December 31st, I'm saying report there are 34 members, five career, eight part time, 21 volunteer. Uh, that hasn't really changed. It's actually dropped. Uh, we have six career, eight part time, and 17 volunteers currently. Um, we did recruit 70 volunteers in 2018. Poyo the fire chicken helped with that. Uh, our volunteers spent 11,420 hours on shift covering. And um, we had two members of Explore Post 800. Uh, we're going to kick that up into gear and try and get um, more explorers. Because there's only two of them, and they can only explore so much. Mm -hmm. Anyone from Antioch? No. It was a Miller fellow doing something? Uh, we had no Miller fellow. We had a co op student. A co op, excuse me. But he has not continued on. And who is the fire chicken? Poyo. <laughs> of course. It's our official mascot. He showed up one day in the front yard. I remember. Okay. Uh, our, our reward recipients, you may remember because you were all there. I think you were all there. Uh, so Casey Brewer was our recruit of the year. Ryan Evans was firefighter of the year. He took that award and went to Springfield. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Uh, top volunteer responder of the year again was Nick Miller Jacobson. Um, Joe Penudo was our member of the year. That's not right. Was Brent Houseman. That's a typo. <coughs> Wonderful. Brent yeah. Houseman, and then uh, Denny, Nick, Ryan, and Joe got the Harold Finn Award for Meritorious Service. So, the part you've all been waiting for the statistics. Dun -dun. So, you know this one total calls, our total incidents went up to 1,081, which is a record for us in 2018. We are on target um, <laughs> to be at 1,200 this year. No way. Way. So we'll see. Remind us what CAD stands for. Computer Aided Dispatch. So those are the number of times we were actually dispatched by Central Dispatch. So we had 1,128 runs, which is different than the CAD incidents because sometimes we count things that um, that they weren't involved in. Uh, and 1,081 CAD incidents. Walk ups. Yeah. So location wise. And I make the point that that's two and a half ambulance runs a day. Mm -hmm. Please do. <laughs> less than one a day of fire. Yes. Yeah, fire, you know, not so a lot of fire anymore. It's not a fire department, this is an ambulance department. Yep. It definitely is. Most fire departments are. Uh, unless you're Camden, New Jersey. Even FDNY, I mean, the, biz, the biggest fire department in the country in New York City, had 400,000 fire calls last year, which is a lot, no matter how you slice it. Um, but they're on target for 2 million ambulance calls this year. So, um, yeah, most places are EMS departments that happen to fight fires. 
So incident-wise, uh, for the ambulance side, EMS things, at once again, 85% of the calls were in Yellow Springs. Uh, why? Well, that's, that's where it lives, and that's the population, and that's where most of the visitors show up. Um, it was followed by uh, the te Miami Township with 8%, and then it goes down from there, 2% in Clifton, uh, 2% um, mutual aid. We only had one less than 1% in Bath Township, but we only had three calls at the end of the year, so that. that. Fire, it's a little bit different. 54% of the calls are in Yellow Springs, 26% are in the township. Uh, that's to do with there's a lot more territory out in Miami Township to cover fire-wise, so. Uh, more opportunities for brush fires and car fires and that type of thing. 10% uh, of the calls were at Antioch College, which is primarily um, fire alarms. It goes down from there. EMS incident-wise, uh, this is pretty much trending the same way as for years. 41% are medical emergencies, things like um, strokes, breathing difficulty, uh, sick person, which is a fancy medical term for a sick person, um, <laughs> those kind of things. You um, stole the chart. 17% <laughs> were trauma, so traumatic injuries. Those usually spike in the summer. Bicycle accidents, that type of thing. Falls in the park in the Glen. Um, we had 11% were cardiac related. As our population gets older, we're seeing more and more of these cardiac related issues. Um, and then, of course, our friend, uh, mental health, 13%. Um, the average in this part of the state is 4% of your call volume is mental health related. Um, when we factor in other, I mean, that's just primary. 13% of the calls, the primary complaint was a mental health related complaint. When you factor in some of the medical calls and traumas that also had a component of alcohol, drug abuse, or mental health, the mental health category spikes to about 27%. People do enjoy themselves here. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. I will guarantee you that if that if this was 1949 or something, just based on all the, the records that I put in for the sedentary stuff, that would break down to the cardiac would be probably 60%. And pneumonia would be 39 percent, and other would be uh, run over by a truck. <laughs> yeah, probably. Or train, and that's all. Yeah, right. That's all there was. It was it was hearts and lungs. <laughs> well, you don't oh, have death, not. Well, you've got to have an incident first. Something's got to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then on the fire side, incident type, um, seven percent were actually fires, which is higher for us than usual. Mm -hmm. Uh, most are rescue and EMS related, car crashes, assistance the medic units, that type of thing. 28% um, false alarms. Okay. Um, 16 were hazardous conditions, smoke in the structure, people spill gas outside. Um, the classic Yellow Spring springtime uh, conundrum where people are, oh, I don't know, burning leaves in their backyard, which you're not supposed to do, or even having a barbecue or just a good old fashioned cookout. And the neighbor hates them, and instead of actually going over and saying, hey, could you dot, 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 now they call us. Um, it does shock me for a town that everyone is so huggy-huggy that uh, no one likes to talk to their neighbors when, they have, when they're upset about something. Um, Patient-wise, we saw 763 patients. Um, 184 of those were treated and released, which is a higher number than usual. Um, and 17 were, were deceased. Um, the vast majority of our patients still remain Kettering Health Network patients. Um, roughly, what, 95%? Whatever. Um, oh, 80, 80%. <laughs> go to Soin and Green. 7% um, go to Mercy in Springfield. And then the rest to the Dayton area hospitals. Um, pretty much equally broken between Miami Valley Children's and Miami Valley South. We didn't go any. We didn't make any transports to Kettering last year itself, the Mothership Hospital, uh, which is a good thing because that's like a 32-minute trip. Trying to do that. Yeah. I think we went to Grandview once. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> most patients are usually taken care of both by Swain and Green. And then the average age of our patients is 54. Other stats. So our ambulance response time, which is from time of the call that we were dispatched. 
to our arrival on scene was 6.3 minutes, which isn't bad when you consider we're covering 20, well, 32 square miles. So. Um, and then the fire engine is actually seven minutes, which isn't bad either. Uh, there was $404,000 worth of fire loss. On the flip side, we were able to save $1.4 million worth of property, um, which is pretty much what wasn't burned. I'm like, <laughs> you know, if you had a small fire in a dormitory and the rest of it was saved, that's what that comes out as. So that's why it's nice. So there were two fire, where the, whole, the house basically got it, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, two large loss fires. That's not usually the have none or one? It varies from year to year, um, situation and staffing and that type of stuff. Fire prevention wise, completed 163 fire safety inspections and 27 plan reviews. Uh, made people fix 352 code violations. Uh, we issued 54 fire code permits, did 16 public education events, and continue to work closely with the building department, uh, Yale Springs Planning, i.e. Denise, and the State Fire Marshal on different so some key accomplishments for the year. Some staffing, we launched our professionally designed volunteer recruiting campaign utilizing direct mailing and social media. Um, I think we will, we're getting ready to launch another one. I think we will cut back a little bit on the social media. Um, Bob had dis did discovered that Facebook could do this job recruiting uh, function. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that it's Facebook. So when we receive like 37 applications, uh, 34 of them were people in Russia or, you know, <laughs> Ethiopia, somewhere else who had no experience, no desire, and that kind of stuff. Um, the cards, you know, don't cost us that much, so they worked out nice. Lee and Clayton Stan did the design. Uh, looks pretty nice. Um, and then we had three members continuing our workforce assistance program, which helps defray uh, rental costs so people can actually live in the community that they want to serve. Uh, as you all know, because you approved it, uh, <laughs> we transitioned our hourly career guys from 40-hour shifts to the standard 24-48 uh, hour rotation where they're on duty for 24 hours and off for 48. Um, so this has given us, well this has given me a lot more sleepful nights, restful nights, um, but it has also resulted in just almost 24 hour, seven day a week in-station ALS coverage. And now they're all supervisors too. So that um, and then the majority of the part-time staff also transitioned to a rotating 24-hour shift alongside one of the career guys, uh, which has been great for them. They all really enjoy that. They know every six days they're on duty, so it's easy to plan and schedule and work on the job or whatever. Uh, and this allows for the minimum of two guys on duty 24-7. What does ALS stand for? Advanced life support, paramedic level care. Uh, now we just need to kind of flesh out the volunteer side, get some of these few people who are still waiting to get their EMT certifications through and that will help beef up those staffs on certain things. Yeah. Um, as you may recall, we're also an American Heart, as as an American Heart Association training center should be in there, sorry. Uh, we provide uh, first aid and training across the Miami Valley. So in 2018, our 48 instructors taught all those classes. Basically, a thousand students were certified across all disciplines by all our instructors. And the center covers its costs and makes a little bit of money um, on top of that. But it's definitely a, a good thing. <coughs> Fiscally, we received two grants from our friends, the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. So 29, approximately, I rounded. 29000 for our new uh, power cot. So now both medics have the same cot, which is very nice uh, for my back. Uh, we just had our inspection. The one-year inspection, apparently, workers' comp had to come in and make sure that we actually purchased it and it was actually installed. So the gentleman was here and was happy to see that it was here. Uh, we also got the $7,000 from the new fire grant um, from the state, PWC. So the turnout gear extractor, i.e. fancy washing machine, um, it allows us to clean contaminated firefighter gear in-house. The guys have really taken to that. They're cleaning a lot of gear. So. <laughs> um, we also received an approximately $11,000 gift from the 100 Women at Green County Group, um, spearheaded by Lisa Goldberg. Uh, she tried, I think it was the third time was the charm. Um, so with that, we purchased the Physio Control Lucas CPR device, which is uh, 
the device that does the chest compressions for you, which is fantastic. They just used it last week again. Uh, and we are working, Alex is working on using our leftover safety money from this, because you're eligible for up to 40,000 bucks. So we have 11,000 left to go towards um, another Lucas. And we also have another community group who may be interested in purchasing one for us. Um, nice. Yeah, related. It's a group that, uh, if you want to rename or not us, but if you recall, when we got the first caught with a new ambulance, mm -hmm. uh, a member's mother mm -hmm. purchased, well, not the whole thing, but gave us 10000 for it. Right. So she's in a community group, and they are looking for something to fund. So hopefully it's going to work. Yeah, and then we, uh, at the end of the year, we place the order, we just receives it for the $10,000 forceful entry training door. Cost share split, not as much of a split, equal split as I had hoped, but <laughs> the <laughs> Firefighters Association coughed up uh, 2500 bucks. Uh, Cedarville Township coughed up $1,500, which was very nice as well. That was much we thought. And then we paid the rest. But it's been used several times by both departments, and it's a great, great tool. And you may have heard, we uh, jumped into this contract with Bath Township at the end of last year, after after years of teasing each other. <laughs> Um, so uh, we had three calls by the end of the year in Bath Township, but uh, it's been asked, estimated to add about nine calls a month. So as of June 1st, we've had 45 incidents in Bath Township. Um, we were the, uh, the lucky recipient of the largest area geographically, but the smallest run zone. Beaver Creek's already at 160 some odd in their tiny little area. And I think Bethel Township's up around 80 or 90. So. So this works out well for us. <laughs> and then we continue to be in a lot of events. We were at, of course, every street fair, because, you know, why would it be? Um, the parade and the fireworks on Independence Day, which is always fun. Fireworks, we, I mean, we have to be there by law, so we have a good time with it. Uh, we did fire engine rides. Our bike team was at the Dayton Air Show, which will be again this weekend. So uh, if you're at the Dayton Air Show, look for two people on bikes. <laughs> Uh, both Yellow Springs and Dayton Pride Festivals we participated in, and then the Yellow Springs Not Living Warm Center Plan we participated in since, you know, we pretty much run it. So, uh, and other stuff too. Last but not least, our challenges. Well, the first one is just to get the, we're, we're so close we can taste it. Um, finish up the fire station. Well, it started, but finish it up. Um, continue uh, recruiting, retain, retaining, retaining volunteers. Uh, primarily local ones, uh, this continues to be an issue. A lot of people who want to volunteer with us can't afford to live here, um, which is a real big issue, but you know, I'm sure it's being worked on. I've heard that for 30 years I've lived here. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna work on this affordability thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, maintaining adequate staffing, obviously, as we get busier is having enough people. Uh, every fire department in Miami Valley is having the same issue with recruiting enough part and full-time people uh, to work. It's actually a national issue. Mm -hmm. um, people don't really want to do this job anymore. Um, continue looking into local and regional shared services. There's a bill in there for uh, our payment to Beaver Creek Township, paying off that loan for the Marks radios, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, funding and affordability and trying to balance our needs with the community's needs to try and <coughs> um, be affordable uh, with the operating levy coming up sometime in the next year. So. So that's something that we're cognizant of. Uh, we're proud of the fact that we're pretty cheap uh, for the services that people get. When you compare it to our closest neighbors in terms of service, uh, Zena Township and um, who's the other one? Pick on all time. Uh, Sugar Creek. Uh, we're busier than both of them at this point. Um, but whereas our total budget with the EMS building is roughly what about eight hundred thousand, I'd say. Um, they're looking at Zena Township's uh, one point six million and. Uh, Sherwood Creek's over two, so we're a pretty good, pretty good deal. Um, we're the Kia of fire departments around here. So, yes, Mark. So yeah. why don't people like doing this job? There are multiple theories. I mean, one of the big ones is always like, well, it's these millennials. They don't want to do anything. Man. I don't buy into that. I don't think that's the case. Um, so I think one of the issues is, especially in the career side. Fire service, for the most part, especially in Ohio, still uses a very antiquated civil service system, which was supposed to be fair, but guys don't want to wait two years for a job. 
uh, which I don't blame. You know, we want to. Uh, and there's a lot of other jobs that can pay you just as well or more and don't have, you know, a lot of these guys when they get hired in, they're like, yeah, I work 24 hours, I'm off for 48, and they think it's the greatest thing, and then they start doing it, and they're like, as good as I thought of this. Um, so there's a lot of things that the fire service could adapt to, but we're not very good at that. I think, I mean, I like to think we are. We try and change things to make it easier, but um, fire service generally, we're not very good about change at all. <laughs> um, and in terms of volunteering, it's, I think it's just an issue of finding the right people. And people are just very busy nowadays. You know, when I joined 30 years ago, we had a lot of local, a ton of local volunteers. We were mm -hmm. almost 60 people. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that changed with Verne Labs leaving. There were a lot of people who worked at Verne, um, and people just got busier. There's more dual income families. They don't have time. The training is a lot longer. It's not 36 hours to be a firefighter anymore. Uh, so there's a bunch of factors that. I do it. We've got people who come in. Like I like to volunteer, but I only have one night a week, uh, one night a month. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, the training itself is going to take a lot more than that. So. so there's a lot of issues, unfortunately. And I, you know, one of the big issues that we're confronting in the fire service is that the volunteer side of things, with a few exceptions in some parts of the country, is a dying breed. Mm -hmm. It's just harder and harder to find people who want to dedicate the time. And they can maintain that time, especially the experience that's necessary, to do the job. Um, you know, there are always pockets. Western Pennsylvania, if you're you know, around Pittsburgh, it's insane the number of volunteers that they really? have. But what those companies have done is they pulled EMS out. But most of them don't do ambulance service. A lot of, a uh, guy who used to be here years ago, a lieutenant with us, Mike Stoner, who was a volunteer, he left and went, got a job in Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Pittsburgh. It's a, semi-affluent township community, about 34,000 people. And they have a volunteer fire department. But they have 16 full-time guys on the fire department who help carry a lot of that load. And 45 volunteers, uh, but they don't do EMS. They have a regional ambulance authority that's all paid to do the ambulance. So all these guys get to do is, you know, the fun stuff. Um, <laughs> so they about to make chili. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, you know, Obviously, a township of 38,000 people, there's a lot to, you know, a lot more to do than we have. But still, they do about 1,800 calls a year. Mm -hmm. But their ambulance authority covers seven of those jurisdictions in the area, and they're very busy. Mm -hmm. But it's all paid people because people are seeing more now that EMS is really, <coughs> since it's the thing carrying the service, it's, you need paid people to do it. So it's a tough, tough thing that we're tossing in the middle of, unfortunately. And as the community gets older and older, it doesn't help us because volunteer firefighting, particularly the firefighting side, is really a young, a young person in this game. Um, and I can attest to with you know back problems and all that kind of stuff after all these years. So it's like it's a hard thing. You know, as we all know the problems in Yellow Springs of not having other families move in and that type of stuff that affects you know, definitely affects us. So well keep trying. The level of of uh, technical knowledge that's required is just astronomical compared to you know thirty years ago. Oh yeah. Um, certainly and and that leads to having to have that amount of training mm -hmm. and that time commitment to do that. And I don't, you know, it is so difficult to, to do that on a voluntary basis. I mean, it's hard yes. enough to do it, right. you know, uh, oh, yeah. full time basis, just yeah. to keep up with it. And it's tough. I mean, I think it's shocking sometimes. And we left out, we just had, you know, Justin and Margaret pass and graduate from their EMT class and get their certification. Every person, for every person we put through, we probably have one or two who don't completely. You know, they get in and they're like, oh, this is a lot more work than I thought. And then we require 32 hours a month once they're done. And if you have small kids, you know, and the problem is we could probably require less, but then you, they, they stop getting experience. Right. And you need to have experience in MTs. Because so. we do have some complex with the older population. We do get a lot of complex medical issues that having experience really helps. So, And finding volunteer paramedics is just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, finding someone who wants to dedicate two years of their life to go through a paramedic program just to get $16 a call mm -hmm. <laughs> is, is tough. <laughs> harder and harder. And the interesting thing is, 10 years ago even, Clark State and Sinclair had multiple paramedic classes going at the same time. And Clark State's down to one. Mm -hmm. And Sinclair, I mean, when I went through Sinclair's program, I mean, it was insane. There were probably 12 different programs they had between EMT and paramedic. It's not nearly that much anymore. 
Mm -hmm. It's hard to find people who take those, you know, take those classes and dedicate the time. So yeah. it's a very tough thing. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, sometime in the last year, you spoke about some departments doing uh, home visits for uh, medical services? Yes. Community paramedicine, or let's say the fancy term they call it, mobile integrated healthcare. Is that still on the horizon? Yeah, that's something, um, one of the beautiful things now is that uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid have allowed fire departments and EMS to bill for those services now. Because uh, in the past, it was something you just had to rely on. Either you partnered with a hospital who would pay you for it, or you just didn't have the goodness of your heart. Um, but now um, there's an exemption, exception that was made to Medicare rules that allow fire departments to bill for certain services. Um, so it's something our EMS committee is going to look at in concert, obviously, with our, doc, uh, our medical directors. Um, Kettering Health Network is starting to look more actively at doing that. And a lot of community-based paramedicine has to do with helping the hospitals. You know, if someone is discharged from a hospital and they're readmitted within 30 days for the same problem, the hospital doesn't get paid right? under the uh, Affordable Care Act regulations. So hospitals really want to do whatever they can to keep those people from coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where a lot of these community paramedic programs come in, is that we work with referrals from hospitals for some of the high readmittance type things, congestive heart failure or other kind of things like that. And just do home visits and make sure they're OK, and, and you know, refer them to physicians and that kind of stuff. Um, as the majority of our community are caring health and patients, it kind of makes sense to us to, to work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a conversation with one of the US coordinators recently. It's something that, KHN has started to look into, and you know, Premier just announced the partnership with Dayton Fire Department doing a similar thing. Um, so I'm sure part of it's Kettering so I but we'll, <laughs> can't be outdone by them. Um, but it's still a little bit behind in Ohio just because we're still kind of, hands are tied a little bit by state rules on, on what we're allowed to do. But other states have amazing community environment programs, um, stuff like that. So. Uh, um, if the Ohio rules changed, mm -hmm. What might that look for us? Look like for us? That is, there are a lot of different models, but um, you know what? One of the things that we've looked at would be you get a referral list from physicians, you know, local physicians. Um, you know, these and local hospitals. These patients were discharged recently. They fall into a certain category that we want you to work with. Um, we have specially trained paramedics who've taken some extra training, usually through the hospital, and then they can go and visit these people on a regular basis, make sure that they're. Complying with medications. You know, a lot of places do that now with nurses, but paramedics are cheaper than nurses. So it helps the hospital bottom line, it helps Medicare's bottom line. Um, so and that's one one aspect. There's a lot of places, especially in the Metro Cincinnati area, it's not a big problem for us. I don't think we would get into this, but where paramedics do home visits with patients who've overdosed. So they'll go with a team of like a sheriff's deputy or a police officer, especially trained, and oftentimes a social worker or a peer counselor. And after an overdose, follow up one or two days later and make sure that person is has the resources they need to find a detox facility or, or whatever it may be. Um, again, we don't have that big of an issue here. Uh, and I know uh, in Yellow Springs, um, Florence, the police social worker, does a lot of that, which is really fantastic. So, so there's different avenues for us to explore. Uh, and we'll have our EMS committee group look at that and see what's viable for us. You keep referring to EMS committee. I don't know what that is. Um, it's our, we, when we separated from, when we pulled out of the drug box, the regional drug box program, we formed a group, I don't, not committee, I should say task force, because one thing that I learned at our college is that the term committee that means that you don't do anything. <laughs> Came away from, from one of the presidents there, but um, there, it's a group made up of our medical director, Dr. Bailey, chaired by Denny. Um, we have two members on the department on it. Uh, there's an EMS coordinator from both hospital systems, one from Premier and one from Kenner. Um, and we've got a consulting pharmacist with that and an uh, educator um, who help us just kind of determine what path we want to do, what they help with quality control for the department and that type of stuff. Uh, 
They haven't been very active yet, but there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipe that we're going to put them to work on. So, uh, Jason Pelletti and Evan France are our two members who are on the committee. And then I get to be like an ad hoc member. Because I can just drop over to the I'm the chief. <laughs> I'm providing the coffee, so. <laughs> I have a different thread. Okay. Uh, you said there are, in the report, there's 746 different individual, whatever the number is. 763 individuals in 2018. And although currently we're serving 7,500, it was last year would have been lower. What's just Miami Township? 6,800? Uh, no, our population, our estimated population for our turf is about 5,000 between oh. the village. Uh, the latest census estimate actually has the village population up, so uh, that could, people could be going to the barricades and torches and pitchforks for that one. But um, well, what I'm getting at is that something towards 15% of the residents of the township received treatment. Yeah, and I actually, accurate um, I, I don't have the report on how many of those are actually township residents. I could probably get that out of our state. Ah, okay. Because we do see a lot of people visitors and who are visitors and tourists and stuff, transients. Uh, car accidents. So we yeah. can say 10%. Yeah, 10% is probably a fair number. That's kind of striking. Yeah, I mean, it's typically for most communities, anywhere from 7 to 10% of your population may need an ambulance every year. Or Some kind services. of emergency care. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not utilized very, I mean, in the grand mm -hmm. scheme, people are much, lower, much more likely to encounter police department, law enforcement issues, which is why their call numbers are significantly higher. Than usually, but, uh, well, not usually, almost always. Um, but yeah, that's pretty hot. I mean, I think it has to do a lot, again, with the, the grain of the community. Having a nursing home, assisted living, a group home, all those kind of things help consider, you know, keep those numbers up. All right, thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. to uh, New Firehouse, um, we had a uh, presentation last Thursday, Thursday afternoon, uh, and sat down with uh, our competing architects and <laughs> dueling architects, perhaps, dueling, yeah. and uh, an engineering a representative from the engineering group that MSA uses, uh, KLH Engineering, to go over um, uh, a lot of fine points, I should say, I would guess we'd call them five, fine points of, of where we're headed now with the design um, yeah, aimed t towards the bidding process that we hope to uh, begin next month. Um, i just see if there was anything that struck me here as I was going through this this afternoon, the, the minutes of it. Um, 
I don't know if we brought this up, but, but he put it in here that, uh, believe it or not, we don't have a prevailing wage coordinator in Miami Township. Did you know that? Oh, Dan was doing it. Uh, <laughs> he was doing it, but he quit. <laughs> yeah, you were. So <clears throat> that's all we're supposed to. Be. Yes, we are. You betcha. Um, you have to, uh, in, uh, among other things, you have to periodically go and 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 check with the con construction workers on their site, on the site, and ask to see their pay stubs to make sure they're being paid the prevailing wage. As, a, as opposed to an eight dollar, um, you know, an hour, because then that would. This is. Like, is that like a village government responsibility, or who would have no. it? Well, this is county. Apparently, now you're talking about when our construction project is underway, uh -huh. not all construction all over the township. No, just for this. Oh. Okay, only this. So. Uh, it appears that I may be the, the prevailing wage coordinator for this. We can get you a cool polo shirt from uh, the Old Springer Tees that says... You be quiet because <laughs> they said it's generally the fire chief that's the prevailing wage coordinator. You know, that's another t-shirt for you. I got nothing to say. <laughs> Let's get a cool construction helmet that says prevailing wage coordinator. You can't, even, you can't even get whether we need a lightning rod or, or not, so I'm not sure about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a long discussion about the storm shelter and how it was going to be uh, serviced by the uh, utilities. And I think we've gotten that pretty much taken care of. Uh, we've had, we had a, uh, a lot of discussion about the zoning for the heating, air conditioning, ventilation for, the, for the, both the apparatus bay and the, uh, all, in, all this work is, it, it is intended to save us somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000 uh, in that area of the uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and probably the electric also that provides um, for that, because we are going to reduce the electric uh, requirements from 1,200 to 800 amps, and, and reduce the size of the um, emergency generator from, I'm not sure what it is, I think it's 400 kilowatts, right now to 250 to 300 which would bring the price down substantially um, of interest to everyone might be the, the schedule that we're looking at right now um, we're planning on uh, a first advertisement on july 17th second advertisement on july 24th third advertisement on july 29th with a pre-bid meeting on july 31st a bid opening on August 21st, uh, a recommendation to accept the bids to USDA on August 28th, um, and September 9th, USDA approval to award, um, September 18th, a groundbreaking ceremony on, on, on site, and uh, by t uh, October 9th, the notice to proceed and pre-construction meeting for the project. So. That's what we're. That's what we're. And when's the ground breaking? Uh, September 18th. Um, we went through a myriad of other value engineering. We don't have any. I'm a little frustrated. We don't have any cost breakdowns yet as to what all this rework is going to save us. Mm -hmm. uh, in money because we've got to get to a certain figure. You know, I don't want to go, certainly I don't want to go too far over what we need. If, yeah, on the same token, I don't want to be so, I don't want to be too far under either. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it'd be nice if we had an idea so we can uh, prioritize things and, and say, like, oh, hey, we could maybe put this back in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will have that, but we don't have it yet. Uh, the next working meeting, uh, it was kind of promised to us that we'd be able to, to have those numbers. So I look forward to those soon. Anything else? Firehouse, in or out? Did I miss anything from the meeting? No, I think it's crucial. All right, Cemetery Road. Mr. Sexton. We have not had any burials since the last meeting, but we are going to Saturday. 
Is that right? And Ashes in Lakeview on Saturday. Um, uh, we plan on meeting in the cemetery in Clifton starting next Saturday or Sunday because the holidays on Thursday. So we will start on the weekend and get votes and take Friday off. So mm -hmm. We're going to be all right on. Because we're off on Thursday, which, by the way, I'll have the truck all nice and shiny for you. Okay. Hopefully it won't rain. Okay. <laughs> I talked to graveyard rumors. What's the date that's good for you for October? I thought they'd like to come to Scoop there. That's what I'm thinking. So it's, I'm, I'm going to call her back and tell her, you know, she's going to look at her schedule on this. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like it's a pretty good time for them, maybe. Second Saturday. Second Saturday in October. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have one of them the week prior to that. Okay. How many want to do it? Okay. That's, I mean, that's what we're going to look at for, yeah. for the full week. Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing was, I see we got the thing for Hensley's for Clifton. Mm -hmm. It's like they're, it's like they're right up pretty close, about a thousand over. But that's that's including the gravity. So, mm -hmm. I think they were thirteen nine. We're at like fifteen right now. You heard the schedule from Gypsy on that yet? Well, they were talking, you know, in June, but that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the weather, I told everybody. Yeah. We're going to possibly do our wedging next week. Really? Yeah. We are here. At least uh, the two, at least Hyde and, and Jacoby and there's Tandry as well. You know, Tandry can wait a while. That's, that's going to be towards the end. Then they'll hit Clifton as they come down. They're doing Hill, so we're just going to come to Hill, you know, down Tandry. Mm -hmm. So that's something I have to get ready for them. That's the plan, weather permitting, of course. I don't know what it was, but I keep forgetting to remark how nice it is to drive down Hill Road and not hit that bump on the culvert anymore. <laughs> that first bridge? Yeah. Came yeah. back and ground it down. I don't know why they did that first. Oh, that was a lot of But it's much better than that. Yeah, especially for a dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> it was airborne. Always slow down. Slow down yeah. there, you know. Would you like to, uh, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah right by the bench. Yeah, hit that in a fire engine going yeah, 40 miles per hour. <laughs> I think that went to the ceiling, actually. Okay. <laughs> well, they really need that pretty much. Oh, good. Yeah. Right. You want to report on the work that you did in response to the uh, uh, citizens that were here last, last meeting in the cemetery? I lost. The flattening out yeah. of the Bud Singer of Prince Corner? Oh, yeah. You know. We, we remedied that problem. We took the black top out, put a little more gravel in, mm -hmm. dressed it up, and rolled it down. She seemed pleased. She saw it? Oh, yeah. Uh, that you, day. You talked to her? Oh, yeah. That yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, she seemed to like it. I had to check it to see if it washed out, but I don't think it has. It like it. Mm -hmm. the big rains in it. Yeah. Yeah, I helped it. Well, thanks for uh, doing that so quickly, I'm sure. Well, it's all that. opportunity. I thought, well, I knew there was probably everything that I should have been doing. Yeah, there is. I got a whole list. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slowly, slowly going at it. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> you might have to call Todd Van Ryan. Call Todd? Yeah. I'll call him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was a dig, sorry. Thank you. Got anything else for cemetery? Mm -hmm. Anything for the road? Uh, I know we're going to pay next week. I, I'm sorry I've been out of town, but I haven't, so I haven't really done much road touring. Where's our berms and and I've made one round in, in the process of starting with some prodigious. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get the guardrails trimmed. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can do that. Can't bring my nephew in on that or not. Sure. I'll do it because he's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could use the help, you know, I could train with him and bring it not have the guardrails. Just move right along, I hope. Is Brandon, Brandon working much? Yeah, he's mowing. He uh, mowed today, then we got rain now. He was like a little bit too until we got rain now. So he's going to finish up tomorrow. Hopefully. Move farther along, we'll just stop raining. 
we may have to mow this this is again I know I, I, I mowed this half the other day not the grass and I seen these spots and I thought where are these spots coming from no I figured it out brown bit mm -hmm. figured it out mm -hmm. they're not coming back no they're not <laughs> but everything else is the yeah. so, I don't know what we're going to do about that I don't know okay that it yes sir that's it. Anything else for road superintendent? He's not superintendent. Administrator? <laughs> or bosses? How about road sexton? Road sexton? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Being facetious. All right. Fiscal officer, fiscal officer report. We've got a resolution to amend permanent appropriations. I see. And it sounds like this. It's a resolution 2019-20, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize an amendment to the following permanent appropriations. And the gas tax fund uh, increased operating supplies by $5,000 because we're pretty much tapped out. And actually, in both operating supplies lines in the gas tax fund and road bridge, but since gas tax has a little bit extra money, that's where I put that increase. An EMS services fund, um, I increased contracted services by 3000 and, um, and the capital fund contingencies, I increased it by 50000 which is basically all that we have in that fund, too. Because we're going to have to start paying bills, right? Hopefully. I know. So anyway, yeah. Um, so I didn't have enough to pay the, um, the latest um, uh, architect's bill. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just threw it all in there, what I had left. And uh, the Miami Township Trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution 2019-20? I'll make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. Uh, I'll second it. Mr. Crockett will second. Any further discussion regarding adoption of resolution 2019-20? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Uh, just an FYI, I have made con reached out to a private auditor to get our, 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 our 2018 year PC audited. Mm -hmm. Even though we had hardly any interaction with the USDA funds, apparently they still want us to be audited. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, I'm calling somebody to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I put out calls. I, I knew they wanted it, so. It's well, I just, yeah, I just got a notification and I just thought we weren't going to, we wouldn't have to do it until. Things got underway, but apparently that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So they want they're pretty petty. Well, that's fine. That's and not what we have right now. That there was no, uh, there were no words that said tap down in your. Oh right, that was just <laughs> that was just colorful commentation. <laughs> okay, I, that, that's that's all I have. Anything else for the uh, this officer? Um, it's not the zoning inspectors, uh, normal evening, is there any zoning issues that are before the board? No? We're just getting committee reports, uh, MDRPC, um, it was pretty cut and dried. Uh, oh, with the exception, there was a very interesting uh, presentation by a woman on human trafficking in Ohio. And, the percentage of uh, human trafficking for, uh, I wouldn't have thought, for, for, for labor, you know, uh, to you know, go get uh, illegal aliens and bring them up and you know, put them up somewhere and have them work for peanuts, and uh, it, it's a large percentage. Um, and then typically what you would think of is the, the, the female human trafficking that had a younger uh, female human trafficking for sexual purposes. Um, that's a problem. Just normal uh, transportation issues. And, and the like. um, did the TAC meeting uh, item? Uh, I didn't go to it. Uh, okay. Um, regional planning did not meet last month. We will meet uh, tomorrow. Uh, anything happening with the senior center, Mark? Um, no, I did stop in and, uh, and express our willingness to do whatever, uh, whatever 
chores need to be done. And so, uh, they give it some thought. Okay, so assuming that means you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, and going up, we mentioned something about the cemetery. You're talking about the road. Is there anything else going on? Did you? Nothing new. Nothing new. Um, any uh, economic sustainability committee meetings, Mark? Um, no, there's. Uh, I think there's one coming up on the uh, third July, and I plan on attending that. Third um, We did meet with the YS uh, DC DC um, committee on the first of first of the month. Um, and I believe I reported on that at the first of the month because yeah, we meet the same day. So mm -hmm. we'll, that's not going to work for a third, mm -hmm. a third, uh, for a third, uh, for a third week meeting. But we'll, we'll work out. Uh, anything happened on a complete census committee? Uh, it met once, and then there was uh, so-called training this morning that I did not attend. The basic purpose of the committee is to reach out to typically undercounted populations, uh, which which varies county to county across the country. Uh, there's something like 3,000 counties. Uh, each has a slightly different nature, and in our case, colleges are one of the main. Mm -hmm. fuzzy areas, and uh, so the work of the committee is to, is to help um, identify things like that and just increase publicity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm scratching my head uh, about the shift to much more emphasis on uh, computer the online mm -hmm. uh, form submission, and I'm wondering whether that how much how well that's going to work with an aging population. Uh, but we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, um, Mill. I don't know if I reported, but I had the uh, um, Mill roof estimated for repainting, or I not repainting, but painting. Uh, it's been on long enough that it's aged in its original metal, and it's always recommended to, to uh, coat metal roofs after a certain amount of time, generally a 10-year period between 5 and 10 years, and we're over 10, um, to uh, prolong their life as, uh, as long as possible. And we had, had a, uh, um, a quote to paint it for twenty-seven fifty, and. Um, 2750? Mm -hmm. 27. No. Uh, I don't think we'll do it this year. Uh, I talked to Jim about it. He thinks there's some rusty areas that he wants to look at, and, and I'm not climbing up on that roof, so mm -hmm. I'm not into it. Um, <laughs> the roof painter is uh, around now. I'm not sure he's going to be around much in uh, later on this fall. Uh, but. If so, we might consider doing it there. It's not critical, but it's just something uh, uh, a maintenance item that needs to be done to help uh, prolong the, the life of it. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have for that. New business. We have um, a request, our yearly request from the Fireworks Committee, uh, the Outfellas Fireworks Committee, for a contribution um, towards the towards the fireworks and. I would put that before you for a, um, a, a motion to make a contribution. In the past, we have made contributions, I believe, in the, in the range of $500. Is that correct, Martin? Mm -hmm. Is there anyone who'd like to? We did lose a house because of fireworks 10 years ago. Yeah, one of the Odeon houses on South College. Oh, um, yeah, that was 
20 plus years ago. <laughs> well, okay. 20 it was on July 4th, but I think it was actually on electrical. Mm -hmm. Embers on the tar roof. And it, and it, it, and I, anyway. I, will, I will support <laughs> making this donation. However, it's a little ironic because it does sometimes cause fires. Yeah, I'd like to say fire. We can talk about it later. <laughs> Do you have an, an amount that you want to look to? I'll defer to. Uh, I would say um, in the past we've done 500. Mm -hmm. let's, let's move it to 650. Ooh, money bags. <laughs> <laughs> Is that of one fund? No, mm -hmm. the fireworks fund. The fireworks fund, sure. We've done a general fund every year. And they're going to have a rain date this year. Really? They're going to have one last year, mm -hmm. which I wasn't sure why, but um, <coughs> it'll be the fifth. So the fourth is a Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. so just do that. Well, I'll second the motion. Okay. We have a, a motion and a second for a um, 650 contribution. Is there any further discussion regarding that? Hearing that, maybe we'll please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Um, I have one additional new business, which I don't know anything about yet because I haven't had the meeting, but I had a, 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 a message or a, a conversation from a community um, foundation regarding an ongoing project that they work with the village on to provide low-income children pool passes hmm. for the summer. And she wanted to know whether we as a board had any uh, interest in uh, doing the same type of service for those children uh, in the unincorporated area of Miami Township. And I said, hmm, never heard of that before. So she said, uh, we'll get with Patty Bates. And the long story, the long, the short, short story is Patty and I are supposed to meet, but she wants to meet with Josue uh, in, in the meeting. And he won't be here until <laughs> next week, I think. So hopefully we'll be able to put a little time together to do that before she goes off into the sunshine, or sunset, wherever she's going. It's an interesting idea. I can't imagine it would amount to a whole lot, but it's a nice idea anyway. I don't know, I just don't know the nuts and bolts of it. I'll bring it back to us before making any commitment to that. Um, I guess, well, yeah, kind of new business also. I met with, um, uh, uh, Jerry Deere um, about the uh, social media policy that we have and, and made it an issue and gave him a copy of it um, and he's going to make an initial review and recommendation and if we want to uh, do anything further we can do it that way or we'll just see what he proposes uh, so that was um, I thought that was great any other new business? That's great. Huh? Um, I'll mention that this Wednesday I'm going to uh, a half day workshop that MBRPC is putting on uh, from the relationship between drainage and public health. Uh -huh. Interesting. Interested to hear what the results of that. Such so for standing water, mm -hmm. mosquito breeding, that kind of stuff. It, I mean, it's mostly urban, but uh, it, it'll have on the mansion. Drainage is something I want to learn more about long term, <coughs> and it's more and more of a problem. Speaking of great, did you ever move that catch basin? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I know you talked about it, and I haven't heard anything. I will do it. I know. It's on your list. Which catch basin are you The one we put on Tobias, it needs to be loose. And it was working until they planted the field, which changed everything. So long story. <laughs> Uh, old business. Old business this evening. I had two pieces. Uh, as you probably know, I attended the uh, National Association of Regional, Regional Councils uh, a, a yearly convention in uh, Omaha, Nebraska this past, uh, past weekish uh, as a guest of MBRPC. That uh, was very nice of them to make me that offer. Did lots of workshops and, and panel discussions and things, and I thought it was very enlightening, uh, entertaining. It was entertaining. It was a nice entertaining moment. And uh, Omaha is a nice city. I've never been there. Um, very clean. Uh, a lot of urban renewal downtown. They've, they've taken virtually every old building down and not necessarily replaced it yet, but. If, if they don't have a new building put up, they make a parking lot. So people, there's, there's tons of parking downtown in Omaha. Uh, we took a four-hour trolley ride through all the suburbs of, of uh, Omaha and saw everything from Warren Buffett's house to uh, just <laughs> Warren Buffett's house to a very extensive uh, Hispanic enclave in South Omaha. Uh, I mean, blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks of blocks where there was none. One recognizable English word. Um, I'm surprised the, the stop signs didn't say Alta or whatever it is in Spanish. So, um, that, that was that was quite enlightening. And we stopped and got around, talked to people. And so it was all in all a good trip. Um, also last Friday, I went to the uh, county officers meeting in, in Columbus. Um, had some good had some good. Information and some that was. Uh, I mean, we had a long, <laughs> long presentation about Otarma and all the Otarma things that we really need to know about. Now we know. Um, we had a legislative update about House, House Bill 66. Um, it was a pretty good day. Um, We've had better. I like last year's more. I thought last year's was more informative. We spent a lot more time doing legislative updated stuff. Uh, they wanted to. They spent more time talking about House Bill 500, which was the, really was the majority of last year's discussion. Um, so I thought we pretty much were up to speed about that. But now we really are up to speed about House Bill 500. That's one where we changed presidents to chairpersons. Uh -huh. Fun. Among 13 other things. Lots that, of details. Yeah. Any other uh, old business before the board? None. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Moved and second. We are adjourned. Acclamation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.